Welcome back to Educator.com. This lesson is on heat and states of matter. Temperature of a substance depends on the particles of the matter in the substance. The particles in the matter are always moving at different speeds and different directions. The kinetic energy of the particles, which is the energy of particles in motion, it can be transferred when particles collide. It's kind of like um, if you have an atom and it's moving faster than another atom and they collide, the kinetic energy, the speed of that, the red atom, the first atom that I drew, is going to be transferred to that second atom and it's going to take off with a similar speed. It's like um, if you're playing pool, one, the cue ball, the white one, will hit another and transfers all of its energy to that one. So that's what happens um, with all the particles that are moving around in solids, liquids, and gases. Well, solids, not so much because they really stay in fixed positions, which we'll talk about later. But in gases and liquids, the particles are moving much faster and they have much more collisions. So this happens much more frequently. The average kinetic energy of a substance, so the average of how fast these particles are moving, is called the temperature of the substance. So when you put a thermometer into a substance, what you're actually measuring is the speed that the particles are moving, the average speed. Not all particles are moving at the same speed, even though the substance is the same temperature. You'll have some that are going slower and some that are going a lot faster, and they're consistently crashing, colliding into one another, transferring their kinetic energy back and forth. But on average, you're measuring, uh, that's what you're measuring with the temperature, the average kinetic energy. Um, when you measure temperature, the units that are used in science are kelvins, and you can um, abbreviate that with a, a large K, and then degrees Celsius, which is with the degree sign and then a large C. So we are most familiar with degrees Fahrenheit in the United States, but really nowhere else do they use that temperature scale. So we need to know how to convert from Fahrenheit into Celsius and into Kelvins. So we'll take a look at this first, this first one. Fahrenheit to Celsius. If you are given a degrees Fahrenheit and you want to change it into Celsius, this is what you use. So if you are out in the desert and it's 122 degrees out, you're going to use this formula. You get 122. You substitute that in for that F. Okay, so you're going to end up with 122 minus 32, and that will be in your parentheses. You're going to multiply that number by 5 ninths, and that will give you your degree Celsius. So, order of operations, you need to do what's in the parentheses first. Uh, 122 minus 32 is going to give you 90. So you have 90 times 5 ninths. It's going to equal your degree Celsius. So these will cancel and you'll end up with 50 degrees Celsius is what you have. So 122 degrees Fahrenheit is actually 50 degrees Celsius. That's a super hot day, really in the middle of the desert. All right, um, another way to do that same formula to end up with a negative number, I, wanna, I want you to take a look at this one. So degrees Celsius, let's start with 23 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very cold. We remember 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the point at which water freezes, so 23 degrees Fahrenheit is well below where water freezes. So in degrees Celsius, we have 5 ninths times 23 minus 32. This is where I said we're going to get a negative number. Do what's in the parentheses first. 23 minus 32 is going to be uh, a negative 9. Multiply that by your 5 ninths equals degrees Celsius. And these will cancel, but you still have that negative. So you have 5 times negative 1. So it's negative 5 degrees Celsius is 23 degrees. Degrees Celsius, 0 degrees is where water freezes. So negative 5 degrees is below that, so we know we got it right. <clears throat> All right, if you want to go number to the second formula here, we're looking at Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. We'll do these calculations in blue so we don't get too confused. Uh, Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit, let's start. This is when you start with degrees Celsius and you kind of want to know what that is in degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and that's, that would never be used in science class, actually, but it helps for you to understand what 
what temperature we're talking about. You might not know what uh, 10 degrees Celsius feels like, but if you knew what that was in Fahrenheit, that might help you get an understanding of that. So let's just take a quick look. 9 divided by 5 times whatever you have in degrees Celsius. We're going uh, to start with, let's try negative 10 and then add 32 to that number. So the adding 32 is going to come last through the order of operations. So degrees Fahrenheit equals, you just cross cancel that, a negative 18 plus 32. So in degrees Fahrenheit, we have 14 degrees. So look at that, negative 10 degrees Celsius is uh, very cold because 14 degrees Fahrenheit for us would be very cold. All right, so I think we're comfortable with that, but let's take one more quick look, or let's take our first look at how to change uh, Celsius into Kelvins and Kelvins into Celsius. Different formulas in science will ask you to use degrees Kelvin, uh, not degrees Kelvin, we just call them Kelvins, will ask you to use Kelvins or will ask you to use degrees Celsius. So you need to be able to flip between the two for science class. So let's go with um, our answer from before. We had 50 degrees Celsius. We were looking at 122 degrees Fahrenheit, so this was the thing that was really warm. So if I have Celsius and I want Kelvins out of it, I'm going to use my fourth formula here. So I have, I want Kelvins. I'm given degrees Celsius, which was 50. And all I have to do is add 273 to that number. So in Kelvins, 50 degrees Celsius equals 323. Okay, and we just label it 323 with a big K is what the label for that would be. Um, let's go one more formula. Let's use number three. Uh, say I start with zero kelvins. That's absolute zero. That's the lowest any the lowest temperature possible. And, and still a little bit theoretical because we really only get down to like two Kelvins when we super cool something. So zero degrees Kelvin is absolute zero where particles have zero energy. Okay, let's take a look at what that would be in degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna do that one in red to not avoid confusion. So I wanna know my degrees Celsius and I'm gonna start with zero Kelvins. So I subtract uh, 273 which gives me in degrees Celsius, negative 273, and then we'll label that in degrees Celsius. So that is as cold as cold could be, where particles have zero energy, negative 273 degrees Celsius. If you remember from before, we were just looking at negative five degrees Celsius, and that was super cool for us, for humans. Negative 273 is almost unimaginable cold.